What's going on guys? So this is a really cool truck that we're in. This is the 2023 Ram Rebel Heavy Duty 2500 Series truck. Everything about this truck is just super cool. It's got this really nice LCD display up here, or LED display. It's got a huge 12 inch Uconnect system right here. Uh, this does not have the surround cameras and there are a few little features missing from this truck. This also has the 6.4 liter Hemi in it and not the 6.7 liter Cummins. So that's actually a perk for what we're gonna be doing today. And we're gonna be kind of playing around with, uh, with payload and weight. I think you're gonna enjoy this video. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Trucks it's really high. This trailer is really tilted. I think I'm gonna have to drop down the uh, way safe hitch a little bit. Okay, so we have it lowered down to the very bottom notch. This uh, shank's rated at like 14,500 pounds. The hitch head, the portion right here, is rated at like 21,000 pounds. So there's a big difference between the two. This one's actually designed or it came with the uh, the three inch shank and this is a two and a half inch shank um guys do you all run into the same issue with keys you have so many different types of locks and so many different types of things that you just have absolutely no idea where you put all the keys to everything or once you find your keys you have no idea which key actually works and you end up having to try like 20 of them leave a comment below i'd love to know your best key story that you have did you forget the keys to something when you got somewhere did you forget the keys to something when you needed it at the last possible moment and you had to run back let me know a key story because i sure have a few myself all right, so we have power reconnected. That is so cool. Let's go ahead and get the truck backed up a little bit and we'll get it hitched up to the 14 foot Texas Pride low boy trailer. This thing is absolutely insane. It is built amazingly well. If you didn't see the video on this, you gotta go back and check it out because yeah, Texas Pride builds one heck of a trailer and this thing definitely, definitely, definitely is one of my favorite trailers. All the lights, the winch. The frame, eight inch sections on top of eight inch sections. Anyways, I can make a whole video again about this. Let's get hitched up. All right. Zooming on the ball. Back up a little bit, right about there. Apply the parking brake so you don't roll forward. Park. And let's lower the trailer. This truck sits up really high, so we'll uh, we'll see what happens when we start lowering weight onto it. You know, it would probably help if I took this lock off, and now I gotta find the key for it too. All right, I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so we have the lock off. Had to get another set of keys. This thing down. Let's see what the tongue weight is unloaded. Uh, 700 pounds so that's 700 pounds with absolutely nothing on the back of this trailer all right you know i'm not kidding here 700 pounds actually dropped the back of this truck down a little bit so let's uh let's take the weight off of it i'll set the camera out a little bit just so we can kind of see what it looks like before the weight is added and then after we add 700 pounds worth of trailer tongue weight Okay, so that's with no tongue weight on it. And I can see about two inches of frame. Let me show you here. I can see about two inches of frame right here above the tire. So instead of going to grab a tape measure, let's just kind of use that as a comparison whenever I put the weight back on it. Looks like we dropped down, I would probably say between one and three quarter inches and two inches overall after adding the trailer to the back of it. So yeah, that's with 700 pounds worth of tongue weight on it currently, but we're gonna add 
quite a bit more than that. We want to see what this truck looks like under significantly more weight. And the way we're going to do that, instead of just loading it directly into the back of the truck, we're going to do something interesting. I think it'll be interesting to find out specifically uh, how weight affects this overall setup whenever we add it to the front of the trailer. And we're going to do it in kind of an interesting way. Now I didn't pin the coupler and I have the chains hooked up and the brakes and all that stuff because I'm only really driving it around the yard. But uh, yeah, I typically have the pin in place if I was going to go any further than that. But we're just going to move it real quick. So that's the reason why there's no pin right there at the top of that coupler latch. Okay, so we have everything all nice and straight now. You can see the stance of the truck. Okay, so the trailer as it sits right now weighs about 3,800 pounds, roughly. About 3,800 pounds, which makes it a very, very heavy low boy trailer, especially for 14 feet. And that's only because of how robust this thing is built. It's actually constructed to 16,000 pounds worth of GVWR, and we've derated it to 12,000 pounds. But yeah, this thing is a beast of a trailer. From an engineering standpoint, it's built to about a 12,000 pound capacity. So this thing is one heck of a trailer. That said, we have it paired up to the back of the truck. Again, it's only about 3,800 pounds as it sits with about 700 pounds worth of tongue weight. And that's mainly because if you look at the placement of the axles, they are way towards the back. You have all this mass in front of the, uh, the axle. So a lot of weights pressing down on the front of the trailer versus, you know, spread out across it front to back. And that was intentional. So, you know, on some trailers, you see the axles placed much more ahead right here. And of course you're gonna have weight balance towards the back. But the reason we did it this way is because it's a little bit better in terms of setup whenever you're gonna be loading something heavy onto it. But it is a super cool trailer. Let's go ahead and uh, put some stuff on it and show you exactly what we're gonna do today. And FYI, I just went ahead and pinned the coupler just in case we decide to take this thing out for a drive towing this trailer because, you know, we might as well do it. Okay, so we have some interesting things going on here. I got the bad boy out, put the forks on it, drove up the back of the uh, trailer, and... Now I have my Celaton scale up here at the front. So that scale weighs about 200 pounds. It's very, very heavy. It's on top of a kind of a pallet that I rigged so I could use the forks on the forklift to lift it up. And we have it hitched up. Right now I have all of the weight off of the ball on this truck. I'm gonna lower it down and we're gonna see what our current tongue weight is with that scale positioned towards the front of the trailer. All right, so shows that we're right about 750 pounds. And that scale is gonna be off probably by about 50 pounds or so. Okay, here we go. We have trailer, scale, back of the truck, suspension, sag is about, I'm probably gonna say about an inch and three quarter one and three quarter inches. I'm not going to say two inches because it doesn't look like it dropped that much, but it certainly did drop more than an inch. Jack is off the ground about, eh, probably about two inches. I can raise that up a little bit more. All right. So now we're about four inches off the ground with the uh, trailer hydraulic tongue jack. And the next part of this is going to be kind of interesting because right now we have, like you saw, about 750 pounds worth of tongue weight resting on the back uh, way safe hitch back here and what we're going to do now is take the excavator and we're going to apply some weight here to see specifically how the truck handles variable weight now i have my scale here or at least the readout that will give me the ability to specifically see in real time how much weight i'm applying 
to the trailer and how that impacts the suspension on the truck. And then we'll be able to get out and look at the scale, the way safe scale hitch that's hooked up to the trailer so we can see how that looks from a tongue weight perspective. So I'm trying to cover all ends here. Um, I'm sure this isn't gonna be 100% science, but it's gonna be interesting because, you know, there's some folks that say, just hook up something real heavy or drive the excavator or something into the back. The challenge here is you don't know specifically how much weight you're actually applying right here. You can say that, okay, the excavator weighs a little over 10,000 pounds, but most of that weight's gonna be resting right here over the front axle of the trailer, and it's not gonna transfer the way I'm anticipating. At least with this, I know that I'm gonna be positioning most of the weight right here, and as I press down, I'll be able to see specifically how much weight is being applied. Now, the magic number here is that I don't really want to exceed 1,500 pounds because then I'll be exceeding the actual capacity of the hitch itself or the shank, not the coupler at the end, but the shank. And that's one of the reasons why I have the tongue jack down about four inches off the ground so I can have that as kind of a fail safe in the event that the way safe shank breaks and the trailer drops. So this is probably a safer way to do it versus trying to load up something super heavy, drive it forward, and hope that we don't have a failure. At least this will give me the ability not to have anybody in the truck or on the trailer whenever we do this test. Okay, so I have the transmitter and the scale turned on. I have the scale readout turned on. Currently zeroed out at zero pounds. If you guys haven't seen the video I did on this, this thing is super cool. The folks over at Celaton provided this to me for uh, use on the channel so I could weigh different things. So that's really, really cool. This thing can go up to 10,000 pounds, which I am certainly not gonna exceed here. So this will be really interesting to, uh, to see specifically what happens when I take the excavator, start pressing down on this scale and how it impacts the ride height of the truck as well as the scale on the truck. want to get a lot of force I can turn the blade to the back of the excavator and uh, and it will definitely provide more downward force up front sim simply because the blade will act as kind of a, a back leverage to prevent the front from coming up we're gonna try this like this for now we'll see what happens but before I do this I'm gonna get out and take a couple measurements for you guys so you can see specifically what's uh, what's happening in terms of the suspension of the truck Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get all the weight off of the pin again. So I'm gonna lift the trailer up. And I'll tell when the coupler's loose right there that the weight's off. Okay, so the weight is off. I can move that underneath the coupler. So this is gonna be the stock height of the truck. We're gonna measure from the bottom of the fender here down to the ground. Of course, we had to get a gust of wind right when I was doing this. Okay, we are at right at 44 and a half inches. So 44 and a half inches from the bottom of the fender here down to the ground. We're gonna go ahead and put weight on it now. That's gonna be the weight of the trailer, or at least the tongue weight plus the weight of the scale in the back. All right, so now we have all the trailer's tongue weight on it. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so we are at 43. So it dropped about an inch and a half. So the tongue weight of the trailer plus the scale on board has dropped the suspension one and a half inches. Now we're gonna start applying weight to the back of the truck with the excavator, and we're gonna see how much weight we're applying to the scale, but also how that equates to weight that's being transferred to the back of the truck. Okay, and just so you guys know, whenever you load a trailer up like this, you really wanna position most of the weight right around here. 
slightly forward of the axles, so at least most of the weight is resting within this kind of magic area right here. And that's because you want some of the weight to go to the front, but you want the majority of the weight to be held by the axles. If you position it too far back, then you remove weight off of your tongue and you can make for a very, very dangerous and kind of sway-inducing towing situation. So what we're doing here is really positioning a lot of the weight forward of the axle, really right between here and the actual coupler. This is not ideal whenever you're loading up. Believe it or not, though, it is more ideal than positioning the weight behind the axles. But if you had like a tractor or something that was heavy loaded on here and the motor was in the back and the majority of your weight was in the back and you backed it on, this might be where your weight is actually resting. So this is going to be a pretty good example for folks who use a trailer like this and load something heavy on with the majority of the weight forward or at least towards the truck of the axles. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put the weight down on it slowly. We'll see specifically through the Celaton scale readout right there what that weight actually looks like right here. And then we'll come out and we'll take a look at the coupler and we'll see what the uh, weigh safe says the weight is that's actually being transferred to the truck. Okay, so yeah, we jumped up to 1,436 pounds is how much we're actually pushing down on that scale right now. Let's go to the other side. Back of the truck actually still looks pretty level. We'll take a measurement in here in a second. Let's see what the scale says. So we are at 1,500 pounds on the scale. 1,500 pounds. Jack is not touching the ground. And what did that do to the suspension? Honestly, it really doesn't look like the suspension moved that much. Let's take a measurement though. All right, so we are at 42 inches. So it dropped one inch. Actually, let me see here. That dropped a little over an inch. It dropped one and one eighth of an inch. So we're at 1,500 pounds on the back of this truck. It dropped one and one eighth of an inch. And I know for those of you who didn't see the first video, you're wondering what the payload capacity on this truck is. Let me show you. So this three quarter ton truck, because it has the Hemi in it, not the Cummins, gets you quite a bit more payload capacity, 2,940 pounds worth of payload capacity. So if we were gonna be hauling an RV and we had 1,500 pounds worth of weight resting over the back hitch of this truck, this is what it would look like. You know, I'm not going to say it's squatting at all. It's pretty much completely level. I mean, it's as level as you could probably get it. Now, what happens if we go up to 2,000 pounds? My biggest concern is that we're going to be exceeding the shank capacity of this way safe hitch. And I could have put a heavier duty hitch on, but I really wanted to see the uh, the weight readout on this specific one. And this is the aluminum hitch. So those of you who are on the fence about getting an aluminum hitch, we're gonna crank this thing up to 2000 pounds and we're gonna see how it uh, how it looks after that. Okay, so the weight's dropping back a little bit again because it's kind of pushing back on the hydraulics, but we got roughly 2,100 pounds worth of weight pushing down on the back of the, at least the front of the trailer. Let's see what that equates to here. I want to do this quickly. We are at about 1,700 pounds right now on the way safe. We're going to go ahead and measure the height here over the, over the back. And we have dropped to 41 and a half inches. So we've dropped just a little bit more, almost a half an inch more. This is what the setup looks like. Now you can actually see the back of the truck squatting a little bit, not very much. This is pretty cool. Okay, and just for the shock and awe, we wanted to do 2,738 pounds. I got this thing really pressing down now. You can even tell the front of the excavator is slightly up. See what that's doing to our shank. 
I'm guessing we're over 2,000 pounds now. Not quite. We're at about, I'd say about 1,800 pounds. 1,800 pounds on the back of the truck. That's pretty crazy. Let's check it out from a uh, sag perspective. Right at 41 inches. So yeah, we're uh, we're pushing the limits in terms of what that waist safe hitch is, is designed for from a ratings perspective. I don't really want to go above this just because right now I'm about 500 pounds over the shank capacity of that waist safe hitch, the specific one that I'm using right there with the two and a half inch shank. But so far it seems to be handling the weight pretty well, but this is static weight, it's not dynamic weight, so it's not constantly moving up and down, so I wouldn't want to do this if I were actually towing it down the street. But this is the equivalent of a relatively heavy travel trailer being pulled by this truck. Now, you use weight distribution, sway control, all that stuff, you'll have a much, much better chance of controlling that type of load. But this is about how it would sit with that much weight. Pretty cool, huh? So this really speaks to the fact of weight distribution, right? Weight distribution is so important. About half of the weight that we're applying to the back is actually making it to the truck. The other half is making it back here. And you can see we're right a little actual behind the halfway point, but roughly the halfway point because the uh, scale itself is going to spread some of that weight out over this area up front. But this gives you kind of an idea of what you could expect if you're gonna be towing something really heavy with a truck like this. And the main message that you wanna get here is the fact that the Ram Rebel heavy duty truck, the three quarter ton Rebel, is designed for towing. It's designed for payload. Where if you compare this to like a power wagon, a power wagon's really made for off-road prowess. It's gonna have significantly less towing capacity, significantly less payload capacity, because the suspension is made to be really soft and plush and designed for really off-road environments. Um, you know, it's an interesting truck because the numbers of a power wagon oftentimes aren't even as good as the numbers of a half-ton pickup truck for payload and towing capacity. But that said, it's a very purpose-built truck. People really like it because you have a, a thicker frame, you have a heavier duty frame, you have heavier duty axles and other components. So I guess the peace of mind aspect makes the power wagon very desirable. But if you're gonna be towing an RV, if you're gonna be towing heavy trailers, this is the truck you would want right here. If you get it with the Hemi, you get significantly more payload capacity. I mean, just significantly more payload capacity. You won't get the maximum towing capacity of a three quarter ton with the Cummins, which is closer to like 20,000 pounds. But if you get it with the, uh, the Hemi, it's closer to like 16,000 pounds, but you're gonna have that huge bump up in terms of payload capacity, which is really important for most. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a cool kind of little demonstration of, uh, of utilizing weight, where weight goes and how it transfers to a vehicle whenever it's placed on a trailer. Guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and we'll talk to you again very soon.